Hey, it's Nikki from My Healthy Beginning. Thanks for joining me for this short video on three tips to your postpartum recovery <laughs> with my fair weathered friend. The first tip is keep in mind the number two weeks. You want to stay in bed for as long as you can in your postpartum recovery and uh, two weeks is what I always recommend to my clients really because if they do that they're really well rested and well nourished um, and they have a lot more energy at the end of that two weeks to kind of be up and about in their new role as a mom so the reasons that the two weeks are important is the rest recuperation the recovery if you look at any healing that may need to happen did you have any tearing did you have a cesarean, even in the most natural birth that's calm with you know no perineal tearing is still really exhausting. And um, and your body, you know, can recover from that just so much more quickly by really giving it the rest and the time that it needs. Also in that time frame, you are bonding and creating that attachment with your baby so that you can better read his or her cues. So the cues that she's maybe giving you would obviously be you know, hungry, does she just want to suck, is it time to nurse, is there a dirty diaper, do they just want to be held, those are some really great um, cues that you will come to know really, really well in that first two weeks of attaching and bonding to your baby. And of course you want to spend two weeks eating. You just spent nine months growing a baby and now you're going to spend, you know, nine to twelve months, most people are, um, have a commitment to breastfeeding, I should say most people, but the World Health Organization I know recommends up to two years of breastfeeding. So you look at, you really need to in that first year postpartum be feeding your body the way you did when you were pregnant. So high nutrient foods, healthy foods, whole foods, natural foods, and obviously if you're in bed for two weeks that's coming from your partner, your family and friends, your community, um, so let them take care of you. You also want to establish a positive and healthy breastfeeding relationship in that two weeks. And sometimes there are difficulties that need to be worked through, um, but more often than not, when you kind of do this nursing in, when you kind of do this resting in the same bed together for two weeks, you're not apart from your baby. So you pick up on the cues a lot more quickly um, and can typically work through any difficulties that might arise around breastfeeding a little more quickly. The second tip is delegate. Delegate, delegate, delegate. So your partner can't do everything. I'm sure they're quite capable, but everybody will get exhausted if they try to take on all those tasks and responsibilities on their own. So you really want to bring in family and friends, and yet you want to find this balance between not having too many people around, which will just you know fatigue and exhaust you, and having the right number of people there to offer you support. So those that can help in housekeeping tasks, keeping up on the laundry, um, keeping you well fed, you know, you may establish some sort of meal preparation and drop with your family and friends. You know, say, can you get two or three meals dropped off per week or even one meal per week for that first week or 10 days home would be awesome. It's just such a great way to rest and to receive that gift of giving from your friends and family. And not only meal prep, but then like laundry and, you know, I mentioned that before, but you really, <laughs> all of that is just going to add up really quickly and it's overwhelming for the partner. So if your friends want to come and visit, okay, this being said, you're going to be in your bed, like in your bedroom. And so not many friends and family are going to feel comfortable coming all the way into your bedroom. So if you're still in your pajamas and you're still in your robe, that's going to elicit this response in them from like, oh, you know, I'm only going to stay for 15 minutes because she's still in her row where she needs to rest. So that's kind of a tip that will help you keep those visits at a minimum. And when they are there, just say to your best friend, you know, would you mind grabbing a load of laundry from the basement and folding it while you're sitting here in my bed visiting with me? Just ask for what you need. You know, in our society, it's like really fast paced and, and we as moms are expected to have these babies and just get back to life. But it's really great when we can ask for what we need and then in, as a result, you know, we take better care of ourselves. So delegating meal prep, delegating housekeeping tasks, walking the dog, you know, ordering groceries online, things like that will make those first two weeks and even just that whole transition to motherhood way, way easier. And then the third piece you want to pay attention to is creating that team. 
And for some people that looks like hiring a postpartum doula, they may or may not have friends or family that can be around to offer them that support. And many of the tasks that I've already mentioned in this video um, are tasks and services that postpartum doulas offer. Some, you know, are a little different. Some offer more, some offer less. And certainly if you just Google postpartum doulas in the city you're looking for, you will just find uh, what they offer. And if they don't offer something you're looking for, just, you know, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and some who still do have family and friends in town find that there's that fine line between how much help they want from family and friends and how much of a break they're going to want from that. So you keep that in mind as well. The other thing to think about are, do you have any health difficulties? Are you um, just having one baby or are you having multiples? In the case of multiples, you most certainly want to bring in a postpartum doula. It really just helps the transition and helps to... Um, like have extra hands and, and eyes on on board all the time. And um, and creating that team of people that you trust. You're at like a really vulnerable time. It's an exciting time, but you're feeling a little more vulnerable. And you may have some things like healing and things that you may need support and help with. So think about those pieces when you are creating that team for your postpartum recovery. And I guarantee you will have a better experience and be back on your feet faster and with more energy if you give yourself that two weeks to recuperate. Now, if you are not familiar yet with My Healthy Beginning, I have a gift for you. It is called the New Parent Toolkit and it's an ebook that I wrote. So I've been doing this for 15 years. So half of this comes from the download of my mama brain and half of the ebook comes from the download of my practitioner brain of really supporting families in this transition from couplehood to parenthood on into sort of the soccer mom stage lots of great tips, home birth and hospital birth checklists. It includes tips on how to eat and stay healthy throughout your pregnancy and postpartum and how to produce great milk, um, 10 tips to having a happy and healthy newborn, and my favorite baby gadgets and ways to include older siblings at the birth of or around the birth of a new baby. So lots and lots of goodies. The value is $30, but it's for you for free. So in order to get that, you'll want to go to my website and log on to myhealthybeginning.com. And in the upper right hand corner, you will see where you can enter in your primary email address and your first name. And by doing that, the new parent toolkit will then be emailed to you. And uh, you have that at your discretion. And then you also will get my weekly my Healthy Beginning e-zine, which is great tips, great articles around nutrition, around postpartum, around all things pregnancy and motherhood. So thanks for joining me. Have a great week.